Hey guys, how's it going? So I'm trying to get back into making videos here and I think I'm just going to take the easy way out on these first couple videos and uh, show things I've picked up at uh, thrift shops here in the past month and a half, two months. Uh, mostly because they're, they're just kind of lying around, they're easy to get to and I still have a fairly good recollection of where I got these things. So uh, let's dive right into it. Um, unfortunately I've got my, my washing machine going in the background. I hope you can't hear it. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll see you when you uh, get to the video editing process. Uh, first up, um, the uh, Humane... Now, I always get these confused because they begin with H. Uh, the Hospice Thrift Store here in town. Um, they've always got uh, some vinyl and a bunch of CDs. And uh, recently, about a month and a half ago, I think, um, Got in a very large collection of records, and uh, instead of, they usually have them in a bookshelf, this time they spread them out over some tables and stacks. And uh, it was pretty exciting. Uh, a lot of stuff from kind of the late 50s to mid 60s, uh, maybe even late 60s. Um, so I was hoping to find uh, some jazz stuff in there. I didn't find a lot of jazz, but in a later visit, found some pretty cool rock stuff. So. Let's hop right into it. Uh, my first visit, found a couple uh, cool jazz records. Um, first up on Impulse Records. Um, no, it's not John Coltrane. It's uh, Pee Wee Russell and Henry Red Allen, a couple of older jazz players. Um, the College Concert. Um, yeah, I'm not super familiar with these players. I think they're kind of some older, uh, maybe even from the Dixieland kind of. Uh, era early jazz that uh, kind of kept up with uh, kept up with jazz as things changed um, and uh, yeah didn't kind of fall by the wayside interesting music uh, I haven't listened to it a lot but uh, really nice shape on impulse records nice gatefold with laminated cover so definitely wanted to pick that up and then also uh, this was kind of neat I never see these in the wild a uh, 45 seven inch single on Impulse Records. This is the Paul Gonzalez Sextet with uh, the theme from Antony and Cleopatra and Second Chance on the other side. I think I have the album these tracks came from, but I'm not completely sure. But I never see Impulse 45s in the wild, so definitely didn't want to pass that up. Uh, same shop, uh, came back for another visit maybe a week later and they put out uh, more records. I think this time they put some on, they put them on the bookshelf maybe. Um, but I, I guess from what I can tell, I got kind of first crack at them because uh, these wouldn't have lasted long if other diggers had made their way to the store, obviously. Um, some pretty cool rock stuff. Not a band I'm super crazy about, but uh, I definitely know that these are worth picking up. So getting into it. The Rolling Stones. The Rolling Stones now. Um, uh, these are all pressings on London Records, U.S. pressings, and uh, a couple, uh, this one included, are electronically reprocessed for stereo, but in beautiful shape, uh, both the jacket and the record cleaned up really nice, uh, played a lot better than I thought they would for their age. Uh, flowers, again, really beautiful shape. Uh, Let's see, Between the Buttons. You can tell I'm not a huge Stones fan because I have to look closely to get the titles here. Uh, 12 by 5 this is another one that's electronically reprocessed stereo. And finally, Through the Past Darkly, Big Hits Volume 2. Um, cleaned them up, put them in Blake sleeves that are sticking out here. That's what you're seeing. Um, if I keep these, I'll probably trim the, uh, the Blake sleeves to match the... Uh, the cool die cut cover and uh, some more rock uh, kind of British Invasion stuff the kinks you really got me stereo pressing on reprise another one in nice shape someone took pretty good shape uh, care of their collection here uh, not really rock but uh, still badass ring of fire the best of Johnny Cash and the Hollies greatest hits Moby Grape with, I'm um, guessing just titled Moby Grape. Unfortunately, uh, you see the hype sticker there, it doesn't contain the full color, giant full color poster, that was long gone, but the record's in pretty good shape. Uh, the Bee Gees, Bee Gees First on Atco, 
Started to go pressing. Herman's Hermits on tour. Their second album, it says, on MGM Records. Uh, heard these guys' name, but I don't really know anything about them. Chad and Jeremy, before and after on Columbia. It says, one of today's most successful singing duos. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> these are fun. Couple from Leonard Nimoy. Two sides of Leonard Nimoy on Dot Records. So I guess there's some of... Uh, side one is Mr. Spock. Side two, Leonard Nimoy. Still in shrink wrap. Uh, another Leonard Nimoy, The Way I Feel. Again, still in shrink wrap, the original price tag. Uh, fun stuff. Uh, a couple from Ravi Shankar, the great uh, Indian sitar player on World Pacific Records, uh, formerly Pacific Jazz. Um, Ravi Shankar in New York. Nice gatefold here. And, uh, pretty good shape, not perfect shape, but a little bit of shelf wear. And uh, this one's in better shape. Uh, India's master musician, Ravi Shankar. Nice stereo, World Pacific pressing um so yeah that was uh pretty cool from that big haul uh that big uh donation there big collection oh, okay kitty just jumped on the stack of records and knocked them over thanks kitty um same store uh, another visit um nothing new from that uh that collection that donation but uh just as i got there and was going through the records and cds didn't really find much uh, a guy i know who volunteers there came out and told me he just priced this record, it had just come in, and it was in really great shape, uh, almost mint shape, near mint shape. And usually the records are a dollar there, he priced it five dollars. This is, uh, of course, Pink Floyd's The Wall, a nice uh, gatefold, of course. Uh, this is, I think, the 20, 2016 or 2014 reissue of this. Um, but yeah, just in beautiful shape. I'm not quite sure why somebody would donate this feels like 180 gram vinyl um i'm guessing maybe uh some college student his dad bought this record for him and said man you gotta listen to this it's so awesome and the kid said uh it's kind of depressing and not really my thing got rid of it so uh definitely a record i listened to uh maybe too many times when i was a teenager and uh, like a lot of led zeppelin stuff um i probably wouldn't have bought it except it's in perfect shape um not my favorite Pink Floyd record. Uh, definitely prefer like metal, Dark Side of the Moon, uh, Animals, things like that. But I'm not gonna pass it up for five bucks in this shape. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, the Hospice Thrift Store. These next ones are from the place called the Repurpose Project. It's kind of a junk slash thrift store. They take a lot of donations, things that people normally throw away, um, but they could be reused for art projects, things like that. But they do have records and CDs and stereo equipment. Um, and I've actually been having more luck at this place than Goodwill lately. Goodwill is, I've heard a rumor that they're taking a lot of their CDs and vinyl and shipping it direct to Jacksonville. And it kind of seems that way, but I'm hoping that's not the case. Um, found a ton of CDs over the summer at Goodwill. Big big donations, big collections, bought them 30, 40 at a time, and just haven't seen that lately, just seen a few trickling out here and there. So this shop's kind of bumped up on my rotation and uh, occasionally find some neat stuff there. Um, this one I already had, but uh, really nice, uh, probably first pressing, second pressing, maybe US pressing on Cotillion. This is Emerson Lake and Palmer's debut. Uh, just in really nice shape. I was kind of surprised when I saw the condition it was in and thought maybe it was a late 70s re repressing, but I don't think it is. It's got the early four-digit catalog number. Uh, this was cool. I already had this on, on vinyl. I knew, but I didn't know what shape mine was in. And when I opened it up to look at the records, and I pulled the records out, there was something cool about it. This is Bebop Deluxe, live in the Air Age. Uh, it's got a record, an album, and then uh, it's got an EP, 12-inch um, kind of EP with some extra tracks on it. But the album is pressed on uh, on white vinyl, which I thought was really cool. Uh, when I got home and checked my copy, my copy I had at home was on black black vinyl, so I'm glad I picked this up. Um, 
think the records there are 50 cents a piece, so I, I paid a dollar for this, 50 cents per record. Not bad for a dollar. Uh, apparently not too scarce, not very valuable. Um, but you know, I think the, the white vinyl is really cool. Um, these, this is really cool. These were just kind of in with the records. I couldn't find the record they go with, and so I just slipped them in, you know, one of my other records and whatever. Um, but these are the posters, apparently from Dark Side of the Moon. Um, I'm not sure. These are in really nice shapes. So I'm not sure if these were from like a recent reissue or an original, but you know, they've never been hung on a wall, obviously. Um, so yeah, really cool to find. Um, and then the other one with the pyramids here. If I can do that ripping these, that would be embarrassing. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, I don't know where it is, but I actually found a copy, a recent uh, repressing of Dark Side of the Moon. Um, probably came out the same time as the, the wall I have here, but just the record. It was in a, a good, on the Goodwill on the other side of town. Someone had donated a cheap, cheap, cheap record player. But they left their copy of Dark Side of the Moon on the uh, on the platter, so I just took it off and paid for the record and didn't get the turntable, obviously. But so I have the the vinyl, but no no inner sleeve, no jacket or anything. But um, well, now I have the posters to go with the Dark Side of the Moon. So maybe one day I'll find a decent uh, outer jacket to go with it. Um, this was kind of cool. Uh, I've mentioned before, my wife and I collect Disney records. This is. Uh, on Columbia Records at 78 RPM. It looks like pressed on vinyl or vinyl light. This is Luann Sims sings the Siamese cat song from Walt Disney's Lady and the Tramp. So I thought that was kind of cool. We are Siamese, if you please. Um, Herbie Hancock. I already had this on vinyl, but I don't think the one I have is a uh, white label promo. It's got the gold stamp. Um, but they are actually white label promos. This is a live recording double LP set from 77. Um, two sides. The first record is kind of his, uh, his recreation of the Miles Davis quintet with Freddie Hubbard on trumpet instead of Miles Davis. And then side three is his uh, kind of Mwandishi band that did like Sextant, um, I believe, uh, with Julian Priester on trombone, I think. Billy Hart, uh, Benny Maupin, Buster Williams, and then the, the fourth side is his uh, his kind of funk, uh, pop, I don't know, disco-y type band from 77, um, which is actually uh, really good on this record. I, I've listened to some of his stuff from the late 70s, and um, it didn't really do much for me, but the live recording I really enjoyed, so that was kind of cool. Um, some more jazz, this on the infamous Crown Records label known for their high quality uh, pressings and packaging um, but I couldn't pass this up. Coleman Hawkins, a great sax player, the Hawk Swings uh, with a cool band here, uh, Dad Jones on trumpet, George DeVivier on bass, um, Eddie Costa on piano and vibes, great vibes player um, I believe he died young in some kind of accident or uh, some kind of tragedy, uh, O.C. Johnson on drums Great uh, session player, played on everything it seemed like. And then a couple funk records, uh, Curtis Mayfield, Back to the World. I love the, the colors on the cover. This one's in pretty rough shape, but uh, I've been wanting to listen to this, so I figured I'd pick it up. Uh, record's kind of rough, too. Sly and the Family Stone, this is a late Sly. Uh, heard you missed me. Well, I'm back. Um, a lot of the original members from the Sly and the Family Stone are gone. Not a great record. Um, I'll probably redonate this uh, soon. Uh, some guitar jazz, uh, jazzy type stuff. Uh, Al Kyola, a guitar player I like, with uh, Riz Ortolani, uh, guy just, uh, was just getting famous at the time for doing some movie soundtracks. So they teamed up on this, The Sound of Christmas. So you got Kyola playing guitar and I guess orchestration by Riz Ortolani. Um, Pretty nice stuff. I like uh, instrumental Christmas music, especially with the jazzy vibe. Uh, and then some CDs from the shop. Um, someone had donated a whole mess of jazz CDs to uh, this place, but 
they were all in these kind of case logic, you know, zip, zipper uh, binder type things. And the CDs had gotten kind of separated from the booklets and most of the uh, kind of the back insert, the tray insert, I call it, from the CD cases were missing. So I kind of went through, took my time, went through and saw what I could piece together and I managed to find a few that I could roughly piece together and bought. Um, Thelonious Monk, a couple from Monk. Uh, Thelonious Monk standards. This one missing the, uh, the tray insert there in the back, but I figured I'd pick that up. Uh, Thelonious Monk, the composer. So I believe these are uh, a collection of tracks that he, he wrote, he composed. Uh, Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong, their, uh, their excellent uh, version of Porgy and Bess. Broadway Broadway show there um, by the Gershwin brothers I guess just George Gershwin no George and Ira Gershwin and then this is cool uh, it's a collection of tunes by Charlie Parker the original recordings of Charlie Parker is a verve uh, collection here I think this is stuff from the late 30s 40s it says featuring Miles Davis, Dizzy Gillespie, Red Rodney, Thelonious Monk, and Lester Young. That was pretty cool. And then on uh, another visit to the same shop, I um, managed to find a few new CDs that have been do donated and uh, picked out a couple jazz type records um, or CDs. Uh, first up, uh, this is on Blue Note. I'm not a huge fan of uh, recent Blue Note stuff. I think they really lost their identity. You know, just not like they were in the the 50s and early 60s where they were like, you know, they were the label. Um, but this is uh, great players on this. Pat Martino on guitar, Joey DeFrancesco on Hammond organ, and uh, Billy Hart on drums. Um, yeah, nice uh, guitar organ trio. I think uh, Pat Martino, if my memory serves right, recorded a lot on Prestige Records back in the day, back in the 60s. Kind of a soul jazz guitarist. Um, but yeah, this is good stuff. And I think that's from the late late 90s, if I'm not wrong. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't tell. And then this, uh, the guitarist, Lorendo Almeida. It caught my eye because I could see it on the shelf, and it was on the East Wind uh, label. That's a Japanese uh, record label. And sure enough, it's got a uh, OB strip and all. Uh, Concierto de Aranjuez, uh, Lorendo Almeida on uh, solo classical acoustic guitar here. Um, yeah, just kind of some you know, cool uh, solo guitar pieces. Uh, he was big on the West Coast jazz scene as well as just kind of a you know, Spanish guitarist, uh, classical guitarist as well. Uh, brilliant guitarist. Uh, this isn't really all that jazzy, um, but you know, I just I love his playing. I've got uh, several several of his records. Um, but yeah, really cool. Uh, the Obi label, Obi strip on this is kind of neat because it's not usually they're a separate strip that kind of just rests over the the booklet. Usually on this side, but this one's actually part of the. Uh, Part of the insert here it just folds out so I thought that was pretty cool don't want to leave that behind um, and then finally from uh, another shop the uh, Humane Society thrift shop haven't found a whole lot of anything in there recently but uh, I always look through the the book section they have like a music book section and uh, managed to find this I thought this is pretty cool um, part of a, a box set probably a CD box set um, almost certainly the booklet, uh, but no sign of the box set, but this is from the Genesis Archive, 1967 to 75 on Atlantic Records from, it's like 98, 1998. I think this is like a dollar, dollar fifty, so I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, some interesting reading, trivia, things like that. So definitely want, want to pick that up for a dollar or two, whatever I paid for it. So yeah, that's it. Um, I'm going to do another video next of uh, stuff I picked up from a couple trips down to uh, Ocala, south of here. 
and uh, kind of northeast of here, a little town called Waldo. I got some hot tips from uh, my man Wes here in town. Uh, Super Wes here on YouTube, he'd been to these places and said they'd put out some new records, so wanted to check them out and managed to come home with some interesting stuff, and that'll be my next video. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.